Okay, in this video we're going to look at the notion of a scalar multiple of a vector, what it means geometrically, and how it interacts with vector addition. So let's look at the definition. If we have C, a real number, which we'll call a scalar, and V is a vector, so it could be any dimensional vector, a two vector, a three vector, an n vector, whatever, then the scalar multiple of C with V we denote as follows. So we just put C next to V like this. Notice we keep the arrow over V, but there's no arrow over C because it's not a vector. So if C is bigger than zero, then it's the vector with length absolute value C times length V. So it scales the length of V, that's important, and that really motivates this word here. And it's in the direction of V. So notice if C is positive, then it maintains the direction of V, it just stretches it out. And then if uh, C is negative, then it's the vector with the same length, so absolute value of C times length of V, but it is opposite V. Okay, so let's look at some graphical examples real quick. So let's say we have a starting vector like this, V. And let's look at a few examples. So let's maybe first look at 2 times v. So 2 times v would have the same direction, but it would have twice the length. So we could write 2 times v like this. Great. Now what about half times v? So that would have the same direction, but it would have half the length. So we could write that maybe like this. So 1 half v. Okay, good. And then what about negative 3 times v, for instance. So here we have 1, 2, 3. So it's going to be way back in this direction. So it's opposite the direction and 3 times the length. Okay, and then maybe one more. What if we just have straight up negative v? So that will be in the opposite direction with exactly the same length. So this would be negative v. Okay, good. So now let's go ahead and look at a concrete example. So let's say we have um, V equals 2 comma 3, and let's find 2V. Okay, good. So notice we can graph V as follows. So that's going to be 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. So V will be the vector up to this terminal point, if we take the initial point to be the origin. So there's our vector v, good. And now we want this to have twice the length. So notice, we're just gonna extend this out double, like that, and that's gonna give us this vector here, which is 2v. But now notice that is about exactly equal to, notice here we get 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6. Good, so that is the vector 4, 6. So we did that graphically, um, but notice that's the same thing as multiplying each component by 2. So notice here we get 2 times v equals the scalar multiple 2, with 2, 3 equals 4, 6. So in general, we can have uh, C times the vector AB will be equal to ACBC. Okay, good. Okay, I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at some more examples of combining vectors with scalar multiplication and addition. Okay, good. So let's look at this example. So let's say we have v equals 2, negative 3, w equals 1, 4, and we want to find 3 times v minus 4 times w. So let's go ahead and calculate that. So 3v minus 4w. So that's going to be 3, and now let's write down what v is. So that's 2 minus 3 minus 4, and we can write down what w is. So that's 1, 4. Great, but now we know scalar multiplication. We can just multiply the components by whatever the scalar multiple is. So this term right here will become six minus nine. 
Great, and then we can, um, in essence, distribute this minus four inside, and this will become minus four minus 16. Again, the same way. Great, and now we can use vector addition to just add these together. So six plus minus four is two, minus nine plus negative 16 is minus 25. So there we have our final answer. That is three V minus four W. Okay, good. I'm going to clean up the board and then we're going to write um, some properties of scalar multiplication and vector addition and how they interact and we'll prove some of them. Okay, so we're ready to look at some properties of vector arithmetic. So let's see this proposition. So we're not going to prove all the parts, but we'll prove a couple. So let's suppose that u, v, and w are vectors and a and b are scalars. So they're just real numbers. Then we have the following seven um, properties. So the vector addition is commutative. So u plus v equals v plus u. The vector addition is associative. So u plus the quantity v plus w is the same thing as the quantity u plus v plus w. Then we have a zero vector, which is like an additive identity. So it's a vector where all the components are zero and we get u plus the zero vector equals u. We get u plus the scalar multiple of negative one with u equal to zero. And then finally, uh, we have these two distributive rule things. So this is the distributive rule for one scalar multiple and two vectors. So this is a times vector addition u plus v is the same thing as a u plus a v. And now this is important because here this is vector addition and this is vector addition. Compared with the second uh, such property, which is here we have scalar addition and vector addition. So if we add the scalars first and then distribute, that's the same thing as uh, distributing, sorry, that's the same thing as taking the scalar multiples and then adding. So that, yeah, okay, good. And then finally we have this one so that we can multiply the scalars first and then do scalar multiplication or we can do scalar multiplication one at a time. Okay, so let's prove uh, maybe a few of these, although you'll see that they're all quite similar. So proof, let's do one, and we'll prove them all with two-dimensional vectors because it easily extends to higher dimensional vectors. So let's set u equal to vector u1, u2, and let's set v equal to vector with components v1, v2. And notice that u plus v, using this uh, representation of u and v, will be u1 plus v1 plus sorry, comma, u2 plus v2. But now we know that the addition of numbers is commutative, so that's gonna give us v1 plus u1, comma, v2 plus u2, but that's exactly v plus u. So that's all there is to it. Okay, good, let's maybe do six. <coughs> So let's say, again, we'll set u equal to u1, u2, and now let's take a plus b um, times u. So notice that's going to give us the vector a plus b, u1, a plus b, u2. Good, but now we know the distributive rule over numbers, so that's going to give us a u1 plus b u1, comma, a u2 plus b u2. And now we can use vector addition to pull these apart, so that's a u1, um, comma, a u2 plus b u1, comma, b u2. Great, but then again, that's exactly the definition of scalar multiplication of A with uh, U plus B with U, which is exactly what we wanted. So I won't prove any of the others because they're extremely similar to these two and um, they actually provide a good exercise for you. Okay, good, this is the end of the video.